All right, well, let's go ahead and get started tonight. Let me get my music off over here. <laughs> Y'all, I've been jamming out for this all, all, all week long, not just the day, just all <laughs> week long, but I want to say welcome to everybody and welcome to, well, listen, it is 2023, you know, happy <laughs> new year to everyone. We didn't get a chance to meet last week, but we thank y'all for joining in on tonight uh, to Relational Real Talk, where we're hosted every Thursday night right here in this living room. And uh, we are so excited to hear from everyone. Uh, I hope everybody had a wonderful uh, Christmas, had a wonderful um, 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 New Year's and <laughs> been taking a little bit of break. Um, y'all, I've been on, on some sabbatical time over here. Uh, they said I had COVID, so I took some downtime with COVID, and so I've been stuck in, I was stuck in my room for about a week, <laughs> and, oh, okay. uh, but I used it wisely. I did a whole lot of cleaning up and did a lot of reorganizing and making sure to take care of myself and uh, just not really getting a lot of my uh, energy back on this week, so I'm I'm very excited about that. Glad that it wasn't, you know, anything just, you know, so horrible or anything. Um, but uh, just glad God is, you know, really faithful through it all. And I uh, pray that he's keeping each one of you as well. So I guess we'll go around the room and do a head check on everybody. <laughs> How's everything going with you out there tonight? Mr. Joe? Oh, yes. You hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, well, everything is going well. Um, you know, it's a new year, new beginnings, just newness all around. And we walk in this space of okay. just love. I know I promote that, but that needs to be promoted. It does. And, and each and every one of us, you're able to see much all of the things of God. You can see. God in almost everything that's living. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't want to sound so abstract, but the truth of the matter, you got to tell it the way you feel it in your heart. That's right. And, and I just, I just feel new beginnings. I feel new blessings and uh, just want to be able to go into higher heights with God. Amen. And I feel that, you know, Amen. this is the year. <laughs> Joe, we haven't checked on you in a while. How is your niece doing? How is she's she doing? doing? She's doing good. Um, she's back at work. She's getting back in the rhythm of life. Um, and I think, too, she's still going to have to have some counseling. And um, we move through that and encourage her and um, allow her to, like to say, get someone back to where she was before all this happened. Okay. So. Appreciate the prayers. Appreciate the encouragement for everyone. Yeah, thank we're you. Gonna keep, we're going to keep lifting her up, Joe, because I know she's a part of your heart. And uh, when 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 you hurt, we hurt. <laughs> and uh, so you know, thank you. That's what thank family. You. That's what family is all about. So keep us posted on how she's doing and with the family and all. Amen. Okay, I will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Miss Nikki, how about you? We're going with our leaders this morning. Miss Nikki, how's everything going in your world over there? Miss Nikki Prentice, listen, she got a picture on there like she's studying all day long on her bed. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there, Nikki? Hello. Hey. Hey there. How are you? Good evening, everybody. I had stepped away from the from the laptop. I'm sorry. Everything is going good. Happy New Year's to everybody. Happy yeah, New happy New Year, Nikki. Amen, amen. Well, thank you, Miss Nikki. I see Miss Faith has joined us on tonight. Miss Faith, how are you doing? Hello, happy Hi. New Year, everybody. Yep, it's allergy season for me. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> so I'm Jesus. allergies. Woo. Yeah. Other than that, I'm great. <laughs> amen. amen. Right now, they can't tell if you got allergy, the flu, COVID. What well, they all sound alike. <laughs> oh my God! I, oof. I've been going through it, and I, I've got y'all. Listen, <laughs> uh, my doctor said 
said, look, you've been in here too many times this year about your allergies. So Monday, they did testing on my back. Mm. I'm allergic to 10 trees, <laughs> six different types of grass, uh, what do you, uh, uh, we are uh, weeds. Let's see, what else? I got two pages. Look, <laughs> how they figure that out, baby? They they yeah. have allergy tests and they put the allergens on and they like prick you in your back. And then when you react to certain, you know, allergens, and I guess how high it raises off of your skin, they yeah. Can tell. And what, guess what? One of them is a mouse. I said, I knew I was allergic to a mouse, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a rodent, right? <laughs> I'm going to do a rodent. So I knew I was allergic to that joke. <laughs> But yeah, weeds and all kind of stuff. Yeah. So my kid said, Mom, you might as well just stay in the house. <laughs> she said, I need you to go have that test done, Faith. <laughs> it's like, it's so she said, Do you want to start allergy, allergy shots? And I'm like, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Because that's a two year, that's a two year commitment that you got to have shots and put this stuff in you. I don't want it in you. Mm. So I got so she's gonna give me some other medication, but I just don't want anything. I gotta shoot in my body for two years. I just that's right. that, uh, yeah. yes, yeah. not even for one day. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. I just believe he's gonna help me out. Amen. <laughs> yeah, but I'm happy to be in 2023. I'm happy to be here. I know it's gonna be a awesome year and many doors opening success big and all that i just feel it mm. there you go. Mm -hmm. i agree with you there faith it's been a good um i mean i know we're just five days in but five days have been you know pretty promising you know y'all i'm gonna tell you one of the things that i'm having to learn how to do is relax i don't think i know how to relax at all you know mm. i'm i'm on the job and you know, it's like I want the I want to be doing something, but it's still the beginning of the year. People are still on vacation. And it's like I'm twiddling my thumb trying to figure out something to do. And I'm just having to learn how to just be still, mm -hmm. just rest. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn it. And um, hopefully I'll get there eventually one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day. All right. Mrs. Cheryl, is that Cheryl Dunlap on there? Because it could be Cheryl um, Long or Mrs. Dunlap. Which one do we have tonight? Cheryl Dunlap. And Cheryl, how are you tonight, dear? I didn't think I'm you were going to be online with us. Yeah, I'm going to have to probably dip out for a little while and hopefully I'll be able to return. But okay. um, right. I had some time. Um, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, this there is something in the air very different <laughs> about this year. It really, really is. That's great. And um, I spent the holiday season um, reorganizing. I literally, every closet, every drawer, walls, throwing stuff out. I mean, I like removed in my place, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And, um, it's wonderful. It, it was extremely therapeutic um, mm -hmm. to get organized because God speaks to you when you are cleaning and organizing and getting things in order and prepared. He's, I've been journaling as I've been doing it because wow. he's been speaking very clearly. So okay. I'm excited. Good deal. Good deal. Yes, yes. Yeah. I did. I did too. And y'all, I, I cleaned out that closet I got so well that I love going sitting in my closet now. <laughs> I, I know what they talk they mean by making a war room in your closet. I could not imagine that before. <laughs> but now, but that organ that organizing really does, you know, kind of set the tone for us. And um uh tonight we're gonna be talking about uh getting back on track. Um, and I think sometimes we have to, you know, hit that reset button, especially at the beginning of the new year, you know, to bring ourselves into a place to where, you know, Lord, where were we going? What were we doing? You know, and sometimes we have to kind of talk our way through that uh, so that we can hear exactly what the spirit is saying to us. And I hope that we have some great, great, great conversation on tonight. 
and uh, maybe find out where we all may be off track somewhere and what do we need to do to, you know, kind of hear that clarion sound and, you know, what's coming to me, what's not coming to me and um, just praying for a great conversation tonight. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Joe, if you would um, help us to open up in prayer, and then we're going to get this conversation moving on tonight. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, with all hearts cleared, we come here. We come into a new season. We come into new beginnings. We come into a season of knowing you, Father. We understand that in this season, there are new things for us but also there are things we have to do for you. So in this season and in this time, in this present moment, we invite you into this caring, loving place that we all can come together, talk about a few things and lift you up. So these are the blessings we ask in our son, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. I love it. Y'all, I want to kick off with this. Uh, I got one of, oh, I got a phone call. Uh, must have been Saturday or Sunday. And when I tell you this phone call, bless my heart. Um, there was a lady and I know she's got to be about, um, she's in her late 60s, maybe early 70s. And she was excited because she met somebody. She was so, when I said she was so excited, she just, I hadn't talked to her in I don't know when. And she just <laughs> called out of the blue and she said, Miss Marilyn. And uh, she said, um, I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. And uh, she said, I got this gentleman that's been calling me. I sat up straight in the bed. I said, shut your mouth. <laughs> I said, tell me about it. So she went on and she was, she was telling me this. She said, but he hadn't called me in a while. And I said, how long is a while? She said, it's been a couple of days, you know, whatever. I said, okay. So did y'all talk during the holidays or whatever? She said, yeah, he said he was going to visit with the family and different things like that. And then I was going to visit with my family. I said, so what's the problem? She said, I don't know. You know, she was kind of having those feelings or whatever. And then she went on and she kept talking to me. And then when she told me who the guy was, I said, girl, you better grab him. <laughs> I said, He's a good one. He's a good, good catch. And I, when I tell you, I was so excited for her because I remember when we used to go to church together, when I tell you, she has such a big and a big loving heart. And so does he. And I said, how did you meet each other? She said, we met at a funeral. I said, girl, the Lord, make it up, making connections at a funeral. So <laughs> <laughs> but it was so exciting to hear the excitement. And then once she got kind of got uh, clarity in her heart that somebody that she knew knew him and had some great things to speak about him, you can just tell that she was lighting up about things. And, and I was just praying. I said, Lord, who could have done that? Nobody <laughs> You. So I think sometimes getting those fresh starts in life, you just never know what that'll do for you, you know, as an individual, it makes you feel kind of bubbly inside and, you know, all of that. So, you know, anybody have any little stories that you, maybe y'all and met y'all a boo thing over the, I've been calling them boo thing for the last week or so. Anybody met a little boo thing over the weekend and over the holidays and that y'all want to share and tell us about anybody? Y'all, y'all ought to be excited about that. <laughs> Anybody got anything exciting they want to share? I, I don't know if I should do this or not. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> well, I met a little boo thing a couple of months ago. Okay. And, um, he's in the room. And it, it's, it's not Mr. Joe. Oh, oh. Mm. wait a minute, Faith. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, I'm sister. Gonna, I'm gonna blow me up because I didn't say anything. I just said, okay, the whole fish that go, let it go. All is here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, Mr. Welton. What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right, now. <laughs> I love it. 
Uh, what's that? What's that? What's that excitement been like? Y'all know y'all gotta y'all gotta spill the tea. What's the excitement been like? You know, because we okay. all. <laughs> It's wow. Because I got my pinky up. I got my tea glass ready. <laughs> ready, ready. Nikki, he's so good. No. <laughs> I'll let Wilson talk. You speak, Wilson. I talk you, all the time. You talk all the time. <laughs> hey, everyone. How you doing? Hey, Wilson. How are hey, you? Well, Thank you, guys. Good, good, good. I did not expect this. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but I, I, I tell you one thing. Um, you, uh, when God sends somebody, you know it's Him. And uh, when you've you know lived you know lived through a lot of things, it doesn't take long. Or, and you made bad decisions in the past. It does. And, and you said, "I'm tired of making bad decisions." And you say, "Lord, I want. I'm tired of that, and I want." you to send the person and he did that mm -hmm. he, he, he did that <laughs> how does how does that well Walton how does that feel to you oh it, it it's wonderful because um the, the drama that goes with being incompatible trying to fit a square peg in a round hole mm -hmm. it, it, it gets it gets tiring mm -hmm. and and it and, and it gets and you know what i mean it's more than tiring it, it wears on you mm -hmm. and uh to a place that you know if, if you don't watch it it can really take over your life as far as the negative things from from the past and uh, and i told the lord i said i I am tired. I am tired. As Lord sent me, and I promise I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, not gonna step out, before, you know, without uh, checking with you first. And uh, and I tell you, I tell you, brother Joe. I know it when you when when you don't have uh, when you when you make when you make wrong decisions, some people have to learn the hard way. I don't know if that's me or not, but mm -hmm. you're, if you do the wrong thing too many times, you, when, when the right one comes, it's not even a blink of an eye. It is, it, it's, you, you know, mm -hmm. you know, cause you know, what's compatible with you and you know, what's, what, uh, what God wants for your life and what's going to complement you. And that yeah. you will be able to compliment that other person. That's right. So, uh, yes, uh, that's, <laughs> you know, I was I, I just got caught off guard, and uh, did did yeah, <laughs> but uh, but uh, did I I do okay, uh, uh, Miss <laughs> Faith, Miss Faith, did I do okay, Miss Faith? Yes, you did. You did well, you did. Okay. You did. No, I you you know I'm not that spontaneous, but. I just felt that well, the Holy Spirit just said, Good, just say it. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well, I did. And so. How I, you feel about everything, Faith? How I feel about it? Yeah. Um, I'm very excited about it. Um, I think it's a journey that mm -hmm. I know. I know it's a journey that we're on. And um, I know some of the discovery the data's gone we already got data okay um we're in the discovery you know they're discovering even more and I think that's going to be forever discovering because you, you know you never know a certain thing until you encounter a thing right yeah I mean, you, right. you just don't have a list you know paper these are all the things we need to discover right so you're you know evolving in it and um you know our stories are different but our hearts are very much the same mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, loving God, number one, yes. in ministry, number two, right. um, wanting to see God's people, you know, free, want to serve, you know, all those, all those things just, you know, come yeah. together, right? And uh, I think that's important that the same purpose 
you know, we're on that same path. It might not be the yes. best path for everybody, right. Right. but you know, he's in music. I'm not music. You know, he, he's plays instruments. I don't, mm -hmm. but he's been in, in, in as pastoral, as far as executive pastor, he's, he's done some of those things. Right. So even though we're not in the same lane that, you know, we can all, it's all related. It's all together. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think, uh, uh, faith for you both, and I, I'm not saying I'm an expert on anything, but mm -hmm. just to put some things out here, I think it's that thing we've been talking about a spiritual partnership. Mm -hmm. You know, people coming together for growth, for spiritual maturity. That's right. And that's that, that's that, that's that. The dialogue come <laughs> out of that, monologue, dialogue, all of that. I think it's it's the alignment. Well, you both are not here to you both here to grow in the path of God. Maybe not at the same frequency or time, but you're both going in that direction. And that's that's about a beautiful journey. It is. And, I, and I think that's when you know that, you know that. Mm -hmm. It's just you but just simply what, know. Guess what, Mr. Joe? What's that? You know, I got a I got a strong auntie and Tyler, and, and she, she's already <laughs> said. All right. <laughs> she already said, uh, yep, she when are you that. coming? <laughs> when are you coming to Tyler? And yeah. so um, when we come, I'm going to bring him by the office so you can meet Wilton face to face. Huh? Yes, <laughs> I love that. That. Yes, do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. Very good. Yeah. Very exciting yeah. time. Very exciting time. Yes, that's right. What do you, what you I... call it? Uh, you call it the discovery period? You, you guys, I believe. You guys call it discovery, right? Discovery mm -hmm. period, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What What do you guys think about? Um, you know, we're we're talking tonight about getting back on track, and I think this is a good time to you know maybe talk about relationships. You know, getting back on track and uh, making sure that we are uh, doing things that are pleasing before the Lord. Uh, that's that's through, through through courtship, through dating, and you know all of that. Uh, Faith talked a little bit about how they have gone through the stage of, you know, collecting the data, you know, finding out whether this is something, someone that they vote, not just one, but both of them uh, being compatible. But I think there needs to be a place also of accountability, you know, mm -hmm. where we allow people to come into our space uh, to where they can actually, you know, we don't have to feel like we're having to hide things, you know, have y'all mm -hmm. ever been in, in spaces in your relationships where you felt like, you know, you didn't want to tell anybody about it, you know, maybe because people were going to kind of throw some shade out there, or they were going to throw some, you know, negativity out there. But as Christians, we understand that there needs to be a level of accountability, and we cannot hide things like that, you know, That's we right be able to you know come out and you know have a group of people that we actually trust so what do you guys think about that what are y'all thoughts around that if, accountability if, if, if i could just say say this that's i think that's one reason why i um wanted to share that with this family here because i didn't want that to be i didn't want you know, that, um, well, you know, someone's in my life, but I'm hiding them behind the closet door. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I'm, you know, I'm about being showing up and being real authentic, you know, mm -hmm. um, either, you know, if it's bad, bad, if it's good, good, but it's me, you know, and I don't like that, that, um, hiding in the closet type of thing, especially yeah. when people mean so much to me, and I want them to to know, you know, that this is true life, you know, and this is what we're doing. Um, yes. Another thing I just want to bring up before we get in the conversation <clears throat> that's very unique is that Welton lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. So he's not located here in, in the DFW, Texas area. So <laughs> that's, that's right. even another uh, element to our relationship that we really have to be accountable and we really have to communicate and talk 
because we don't really have, I mean, we, we see each other face to face on, you know, on phone and, you know, mm -hmm. talk that way, but as far as in the presence, so we really have to, um, you know, just come and, and be who we are, you know, even yeah. in that environment. So, and uh, this group has helped me because of uh, one of the things is that's really difficult sometimes is as a man, and we I've heard that we, <laughs> we have heard us talk about it is to be vulnerable uh, and uh, allow uh, that person and 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 make a a vow to to be open about about everything mm -hmm. and so uh uh that took me a little bit because you know i've dealt with people that that turn those things around and uh and 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 weaponize use it to, as a weapon against you and uh and so the thing is is that uh that i knew from when i first started talking to faith that she was not that type of person and mm -hmm. and and it was easy for me to share the good bad and the ugly you know so that that that's a first for me yeah i love it and and i think in faith i think you said it well uh, this space here this is a good good space for us as leaders uh, to lead by example with the groups that we are in, you know, to let them know how to go about, um, you know, when you're entering into relationships, uh, don't feel like you got to go out there by yourself and be alone. Um, allow there to be some type of, um, I don't know if this is where your family is at, you know, we should be serving God together in this space if we're on one accord. And then, um, you know, being able to, uh, sometimes you'll be able to hear the other person's heart you know, uh, maybe things that y'all have not necessarily talked about, you know, when it comes into a setting like this, you know, you never know the spirit of God may lead a conversation with the person to go in another direction. So I think it's really good when we come together, you know, in settings like this. And, and I'm proud of you for just opening up to it. I don't think we meant to do that. I think that just kind of happened. I but know. It, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it wasn't we, on the agenda. <laughs> it was not. It was not. But again, we were talking about getting back on track, you know, and uh, and I think that has a lot to do with our with our walk with God, uh, making sure that we are pleasing and accountable uh, to the Lord. Um, I want to kind of talk a little bit. Um, I guess we will talk relationships tonight and it'll give everybody an opportunity to kind of <clears throat> jump in as you are. Uh, but um, um, uh, my friend and I, we've been doing like a devotional. We've been doing it every night. When I tell you every night, and it has been the best, best thing that I have ever done because it allows you to open up and get into conversations that you normally wouldn't just get in on your own. And one of the conversations, and I think I'll, I'll kind of use that one as our jumpstart tonight, uh, one of the conversations was dealing with insecurities, you know, acknowledging that we all have insecurities in relationships and, you know, I want, I want all of us to kind of join into this conversation tonight. And, you know, we're talking about getting back on track. And sometimes in order for you to get back on track or, you know, to say that, you know, you know, God, this is something that I want. I do want a relationship, but I got some memories and I've got some scars. You know, I got some things that maybe I've never talked about to anybody. Uh, I heard Mr. Welton talk about how uh, it feels good. Uh, to not have that drama going on out there, you know, to, I call it two incompatible people uh, trying to make something fit that really does not fit together. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard for you to come in and talk about the real essence of who you are when you got other drama areas that are being, you know, just, you know, coming to the forefront all the time. And we just want to be able to be real, uh, to meet someone that we can, you know, share our hearts with, you know, be able to see if we have some things in common or whatever. But one of the things that I think is is challenging for relationships uh, when you get into them is to deal with those areas of insecurities. You know, one of them we tease a lot about in the room here, you know, about like, say, for instance, you know, you got somebody, you call them and they don't call you back or they don't text you back or you looking at their phone and you know they don't read it because it said red on there. They <laughs> yeah. They respond to you. 
or you you listen you decide to go on messenger to where you know you can see it when they when they name drop down to the bottom of it and then they they read it those are insecurities to me mm-hmm. but you have to have some kind of indicator that you know that you got to do some checks and balances to see if this person telling the truth all the time whatever the case and really in essence we should be allowing the spirit of god to let us know if there's something that's bringing an alarm in, you know. Yeah. So let's kind of let's kind of kind of talk about those insecurities. And I'm going to start off with a conversation uh, that goes on with this with the book that I have. <clears throat> First of all, it starts off with a scripture in Philippians one and six. He said, "I am I and I and I am sure of this that he who began a great work in me, in you, will will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ." So they go on to tell a story. They said, when Josh and I entered into a relationship, I thought he was pretty much perfect. Sure, there were a few flaws, but everyone has their quirks. One of the reasons I looked up to Josh so much was the fact that he always seemed to be so confident. Talking to people came easy to him. He could always make his friends laugh and he was never afraid to ask questions. I, on the other hand, was all was always one of the last to speak whenever we were in a group. I've always enjoyed listening over talking, but what went much deeper than that was the fear of sounding silly. He said, Josh didn't know where when we started dating that I struggled with deep insecurities and always worried about how people perceive me, which made me act unnatural or awkward in certain situations. It says he later he later revealed that he noticed this behavior, but didn't realize where it was coming from. Likewise, I didn't realize Josh had some insecurities, insecurities of his own. When I first met him at the beginning of his college career, his major was undecided. It says that while we dated and even in the beginning of our marriage, he switched his major a few times and even began and dropped out a couple of technical studies. Little did I know that this was something he was extremely insecure about and hated talking about. There were times when I would ask him, what's your dream job? <clears throat> what are you passionate about? He would get the red, fa- he would get, get red, red in the face, shake his head and said, I don't know, and change, and change the subject. At the time, it was a relatively major setback because Josh and I were always able to talk about things except for this. The thing is, as much as Josh and I each didn't want to want the other to see our embarrassing insecurities, the closer we got to each other, the more noticeable those insecurities became. From the moment we started dating, he was it was only a matter of time before these issues came out in the open. And once they did, we could have tried to sweep them under the rug, that's that probably would have felt better at the moment, but neither Josh nor I wanted a relationship like that, and we had to just deal with it. So let, I want to kind of talk about that a little bit. Insecurities, you know. Um, how many of you have ever felt that you know when you even just thought about entering into a relationship? that maybe one of the things that stopped you from going any further into the relationship was because you saw some things within yourself. Maybe you were being, you know, very uh, judgmental of yourself, not anybody else, but being judgmental of yourself. And maybe you saw something that they had and maybe you compared yourself to them. You know, maybe they were very open with their conversation, but you were kind of laid back or whatever. And it highlighted some insecurities that were going on in your life that made eventually made you to begin to either start acting very awkward or you sabotage the relationship. It could have been in either one of those areas. So let's kind of talk about that in uh, in this. Have any of you noticed that you have um, identified some of your insecurities in your life, whether it be you were with a maid or you kind of seeing some of these things on your own in life. Anybody? <clears throat> and I and I know it's a very vulnerable place to be, but insecurities they could come from they could come from anywhere. You know, um, it could be something somebody said. 
uh, something somebody did not do. You text somebody, somebody doesn't text you back. It may not be a behavior that this person has set out, but because you've got some memories of some other things. And the next thing you know, you begin to start acting out and you may think that it has something to do with the other person, but in essence, it may be have it may have something to do with you. Maybe a door that you did not close somewhere, and it left a door to where either reject you felt rejected, or maybe someone uh, made you feel a little inadequate, and you didn't see it until your behavior started acting out, and it started acting unseemly. So anybody, uh, Miss Nikki put something in the chat box. Um, she said, please, oh, please feel free to use the chat box if you don't <laughs> want to talk. So anybody, I don't want to hold a conversation tomorrow. Anybody want to ride with that? <clears throat> anybody ever had anybody do something that brought out an insecurity with you or brought out an alarm with you? I'll put it like that. I have one. Okay, Welton, yes, sir. Um, hold on just a second. <clears throat> I'm at work as well, hold on a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's much better. Okay, uh, what, uh, one of the insecurities that I brought up, uh, I think it was even last night. Um, it was a situ situation, it's kind of, it, it was a situation where uh, somebody who I was dating at one time uh, would purposely, they had narcissistic um, um, tendencies. And, uh, and so what they would do would, uh, if there was, an, a disagreement or if it was some something that was didn't go their way they would purposely not call you know i mean i mean for a couple of days or okay well, let's talk now because we're not going to talk the entire weekend well i won't be talking to you till monday or something mm -hmm. like that and I despise that. I mean, I thought I, you never, because I, I would never treat anyone like that. And and so, uh, you know, that was one of a, a hundred uh, red flags in the situation. But um, but it was a situation that came up that <laughs> uh, you know I allowed that to uh, you know I I I, uh, I think I think faces really busy on that day and so we hadn't talked to each other all that day and so uh but and she never gave me any reason to believe that but it came up because i started getting those feelings again uh, of abandonment or um you know mistreated or whatever and i i know i i know where it was coming from and that's the thing i know that i'm 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 uh, in the process of healing and 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 uh, still, you know, we always are in a, in a purpose a purpose of uh, process of getting of healing. I mean, it's never we never reach it, you know. But I think when you can identify it, I mean, that's half of the problem. That I means half of the uh, half of it resolved. And so what I'm saying is that the fact that I was able to see it and actually tell her that you know what I was feeling a certain type of way, but that was me. That's that that was within myself because of some things that I had experienced and it looked like the same thing, even though I knew it wasn't. So uh, I'm not sure if that is something that that fall, fall in that category that you're talking about. That's a good one, Welton, because, yeah. um, you know, and a lot of times people don't even know that you're feeling like that, you know, right. simple thing like I haven't heard from them all day. And not thinking about maybe the career, um, you know, the area of, of, you know, their job that they're in, or there are some people that just don't like to talk on the phone all the time either, you know, yeah. uh, they're just a little bit different with their time. But many times when we've had those experiences where somebody has, you know, ghost us or, you know, maybe <laughs> done some other things, it does bring up questions. And I think it does have to be talked about, you know, and, and instead of, um, well, listen, 
If they didn't call me today, I'm not going to call them tomorrow. They're going to call me. I'm just going <laughs> to look at their phone. I'm just going to look at the phone when they call. Yeah. But I can yeah. tell. <clears throat> on the other half, the receiver. Okay, I'm the receiver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I could tell that <clears throat> something was aggravating him or something was wrong. And I kind of thought back. I said, no, we didn't really talk. But I assured him, I said, I'm not going to leave you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm not going to just vanish, you know, out of thin air and never call you or whatever. I said, that's not, you know, who I am, but, and that's not how I operate. And he knows that, but I wanted to reassure to him that this is not that, you know, yeah. this is not what's happening you know and and I think you know that was a good conversation and you know it's so funny Marilyn because I read that last night about insecurities because I got yeah. the book you got the book too <laughs> I got yeah. the book so I'm like, okay <laughs> that's Josh and yeah and yep. insecurity yep. so it just happened and I said wow and then tonight you read it I said yeah that's yeah. how God does it I tell you yeah, he knows yeah. What he's doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mr. Joe did you have something you want to add to that well, I, you know, I was just listening to, you know, kind of what Welton was saying. And I think somewhere in there, you know, it's like um, we really can't anybody take anything from you that you're not willing to give to them. And even if I feel um, that you have given, given much and given of yourself, and then some cases, it's like somebody else have your keys and it's time for you to go back in there and take your keys back and put them back in your pocket. And then that, you overcome that. And I think we all, uh, insecurities again, they are in you. And you have to recognize that part of you and say, you know, it's up to me to allow that, put it out. I think we're, you know, I, I always talk about revealing the feeling starts the healing unto yourself. These are things you, and, and, and a lot of times the growth situation, the growth thing that we are moving from the carnal mind into the spiritual person, who, what really part of you was insulted? If mm. you in the spirit, what part of you is insulted? Is the fleshy person? Are you operating just in flesh? At a certain point, growth, spiritual growth. God is spirit. So we have to serve him, grow. So when we grow beyond just the fleshy person, ain't much to insult you. You say, oh, they dissed me. What part of you was this? Was it the ego you or the spiritual you? The spiritual you, the higher dimension, cannot be insulted. Or the soulless person, they don't know what that is. So what am I saying? Higher dimensions get you over some things within you. But you got to know within yourself, newness. What is in me? Is there's no enemies within, the enemy outside cannot do me any harm. No harm here. You mm -hmm. said, oh, you're, you're a jigabug. According to who? You don't have to answer to something that you know that is not true about you. Yeah. But you got to know that within you. If you said to me and I'm insulted, then I'm believing that. And I ain't saying I know all of this. I'm just saying we're talking newness. We're talking growth, spiritual growth. And when we get into the higher dimensional person, it's not much about somebody can say this to Marilyn and you're like, you know, you don't have to answer to it. The best answer in a lot of situations is no answer. <laughs> and I'm not saying that's the direction we want to go. But again, I, I just believe insecurities, you have to recognize them and be in the position to say, hey, it's things I got to fix about me. You know, um, and we're talking about getting my life back on track. Some people say I've lost my path. No, 
I don't think we ever lose our path. I just think we don't manage it well sometimes. Mm -hmm. We can fix ourselves on something and think when it don't happen, we just fall apart. Well, you got to go back and, and say, you know, how does it start? Did it start with the blessings of God or this is something I fixated within me and then have God bless and you wonder why it's falling apart because mm. you tried to do it by yourself. I, I hope I'm making sense on that. You are, Joe. One of the things I'm hearing with, with what you're saying is I, I'm reminded of the scripture when it says that, that the weapon may farm, but it will not prosper. And I think as children of God, we're growing uh, because a lot of times what, 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 I, what I notice is that we get wounded. You know, anytime you open up your heart, uh, mm -hmm. there's going to be a possibility that you can get wounded or you can get hurt with some things. Uh, but it is, it is, it is our responsibility uh, to take control of the healing that needs to take place by recognizing I'm out of order with something that I'm doing. Yes. Um, it may be, you know, like, you know, you know, I kind of remember back in the day to where, you know, when you were dating and, you know, you may have done something like driving by their house or whatever, because they didn't call you. And, you know, back then, you know, we didn't have all these cell phones and all that. You had to literally get up in your car and go drive and whatever. But it really was an insecurity within yourself. But yeah. a lot of times we're not willing to admit that that's what it is. The closer mm -hmm. we begin to start walking with God and we start making an acknowledgement that I am responsible. Nobody's responsible for making me happy. I'm responsible for my yes. total well-being. I can go back and I can say, enemy, you tried to form a weapon of insecurity within my heart. But now that I recognize what you're doing, it's not going to prosper. And the way that we stop that thing from prospering is that we begin to talk. Um, there was a there was a passage uh, last night I was going over with a, with uh, one of my couples and we talked about um, uh, if your brother offends you <clears throat> in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. the first thing that is said that you need to go back to your brother privately. OK, then mm -hmm. it says you need to if your brother does not hear you, it says to bring two or three witnesses, you know, right. And then if those two or three witnesses don't hear you, then you take it to the elders of the church or whatever. There is a protocol or mm -hmm. there are some steps that God, you know, when we talk about getting back on track, getting right. back to, okay, before I let that insecurity come in and take over my heart, because somewhere somebody has trespassed against me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that person, first of all, and I'm going to let them know such and such may have, you know, hurt my feelings or uh, something uh, bothered me. That's grown up conversation, y'all. That's right. Because yeah. We can literally sabotage a whole lot of relationships and walk away from relationship because we did not stop to have a proper conversation. I, I even be, I even um, uh, believe that a lot of couples are entering into divorce prematurely when they did not follow those steps. They got offended by their brother in some kind of way because Moses said that the that the, the it's not that he said the thing that leads people to divorce is the hardening of the heart. That's, That's the right. reason that they gave a bill of divorce because it was a hardening of the heart, you know, but his thing was, if you go back to God and talk to God about it, talk to self first. And then if there's an offense in your heart, follow the word of God. If anybody's offended, go to the person that offended you. This is a great way also guys to tell whether this is going to be a healthy relationship or not. Because if you go back to the individual and you let the individual know that they have offended you in some kind of way, and if they brush it up under the rug, make you feel like, you know, what they call it, a little bit of narcissism, like they put it back on you like it was you, it wasn't me, that right. may not be a healthy relationship to go in, you know. There's nothing wrong with an indicator that lets you know that you got some insecurities, but it's how you handle it on the other side. You know, do you just run away from it? Do you start playing games with somebody? They didn't call me, so I'm not going to call them. You're not going to get anything fixed like that. You know, I think mm -hmm. we have to stop and, you know, have proper conversation about those things. And it does call for a mature, uh, you know, um, you know, um, you know, attitudes behind mm -hmm. situations like that. That's, Amen. Go ahead, Faye. That's real good. I'm off camera because I've been blowing my nose. And okay. That, but um, that's really good because I feel that 
communication is so key. It's so key to have and to be able to have a conversation and then to be able to really share your heart and not be in fear and not have any insecurities behind what you're saying that you're actually you know coming straight from the heart and being mm -hmm. able to be transparent enough that you trust the person that you're talking with in that conversation that they are not going to wound you yeah. or use it against you or whatever and I think that's where the trueness of the relationship really builds from that point that's right because if, you, if you can't be you then you you are you're in a in a non reality situation. You're not a realist. Right. You're not in the reality of a relationship. You're not showing up one hundred. You might be there in the in like seventy five percent or maybe even fifty, but that's not fair to the person. It's not fair to you, and 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 it'll come out in the end <clears throat> somewhere you know, down the line. Right, right, right. Sharing, you know, your heart. It's going to come out because I can say for myself, you're right about the divorce. Because after you have gone through and you share your heart, there's no change. You know, these things persistently keeps, they keep happening. Then your heart becomes hardened mm -hmm. in certain areas, right? Mm -hmm. It might not be all areas, your total heart in, in those areas. And those areas start to grow and infect the good parts of your heart, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. like, like anything, like an infection. Yeah. And it grows if you don't get something to ointment or something to heal that area that's infected. That's it will grow good. and it will overtake what's good, you know. So that's good. Meaning share. deal deal with it as quickly as you can. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. on top of it quickly. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. For those of you that are just joining the room, we're talking about insecure. Our topic tonight is getting back on track, but we are going in and talking about relationships tonight, acknowledging your insecurities that may be taking place in your life. Uh, Mrs. Samara said, yes, I have tried. I have had times that I realized that I was insecure about certain things and had to correct myself. Uh, Samara, you want to talk about that a little bit? <laughs> Oh um, no, not not right now. <laughs> That's, okay. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, but I do I do understand it. Um, you know, having to you know correct yourself. I think we have to be. Um, you know, I don't I don't think it's a good thing to. Oh, that's okay. It didn't bother me. You right. know, or um, that's all right. You know, they, somebody hurts your feeling. That's okay. Um, I think that you need to talk about, talk about it, especially to the person, you know, the Bible doesn't say, go talk to everybody else about it. It said, if you got an offense with your brother, mm -hmm. he said, you need to go privately and talk to them. But if they don't receive what you're saying, that's when you go take it to someone else and you still need to bring it before the brother to whoever it is. So that you can try to get better understanding that that's where sometimes, you know, we have to come into settings like these and sit down mm -hmm. and what the Bible says, reason together about something. Maybe that was a part that maybe I was tired that day, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that offense was, you know, something deeper than relationship. It could have been something else and you have to sit down and talk about it. Um, Y'all the other day, um, <clears throat> I come home and um, uh, I had, um, I think I told it, I may have told this testimony to one of my mentees last night, but I think that was Tuesday or whatever. And um, um, I'm still kind of dealing with some things on the job, trying to get settled in. I think it's natural, just trying to get settled in there. And um, uh, my boss, he still, he still works with myself and his previous admin. And, and though we have been ironing a lot of things out there, sometimes when he still goes to her for different things. So the other day we had just, I had been sick. Um, um, so I don't know if, you know, she was coming in to kind of take, cause nobody said anything. She was kind of taking over, 
but um, there were some things that he had asked me to do, uh, but I was waiting on him to send me the information uh, so that I can get it done. And next thing I know, I looked up when I got to work on Tuesday and I reached out to him and I said, you know, hey, I said, oh, go ahead and send me your, your schedules over so that I can get it on the calendar. He said, well, such and such, I already put it on there. And I was like, oh, okay. And when I looked at it, nobody had said anything to me about it or whatever. And so then we went on, it was something else that went on. And um, it was another situation, like I had gotten left out of something. And y'all, I was coming home and something just started hitting my heart. You know, it started making me feel some kind of way. And I'm like, why am I being left out of uh, the equation? Um, I'm having to quickly come to myself and not allow um, maybe the unknowing action of another person to offend me because sometimes people do things and they may have their reasons for doing what they're doing but they don't stop to think how that may make somebody else feel you know mm -hmm. um they've been doing a great job with it but every now and then i'll send something like um i think it's very i don't think it's it's the mature thing to do uh, when you, um, you know, reach out to someone and someone doesn't, doesn't reach out to you back. That's not just in relationship. That's just in general. If somebody right. reaches out to you, asks you a question or whatever, it's not fair that they don't respond back to you, but you on the other hand, always responds back to others. And so what I did was I was coming home and I felt it. And, um, and I said, God, I said, um, I think there's a name behind that. And uh, I call it bullying. I think okay. sometimes people try to bully people and, you know, try to sometimes make you feel as if you're not as significant, but it's up to you to let them know that you are. So I've, I've been learning how to counteract those things in advance so that nothing sets up in my heart like an insecurity. So I start reaching out to people and, and you know, I'll say something like, hey, I noticed such and such, put that on your calendar, you know, whatever. And I said, and this is what I've been doing. Thank you for putting that on there. Just to let them know that though I was not, no, and, and it may sound petty to somebody, but though I was not included in on uh, the, the, whatever was the next step. I just wanted to say, thank you for doing it because mm -hmm. I know what my job is. And if you give me an opportunity to do my job, I will do it. But I think that sometimes people do things and whether they're doing it purposely or not, it's up to me as to how I receive what it is that they're doing. And then I turn them back over to God because I think some people do some things because that's a part of their behavior. That's mm -hmm. a behavior that they have developed. And it takes a minute for us to respond properly to them so that they can know how to respond back to you later on. Does, it, does that make sense to y'all? Or has anybody else gone through that before? Yeah, yeah. I think that what I hear you saying is this, Merle. Um, we can two people can be in the same position, um, but sometimes people have to demote you to promote themselves, because yeah. they may have a, an insecure part of them. My thing is, if she had put it on the counter, why she didn't let you know? Yeah, yeah. And aren't you right there, proximity by each other? No, we actually, uh, she doesn't work at the office anymore, okay. but she normally emails me all the time. But this particular time, you know, uh, she didn't. And, and I think sometimes just to, especially when you're coming into a new environment, it's just like what Faith said, Faith mm -hmm. addressed something that Mr. Welton felt, you know, her thing was to let him know that I'm not leaving. I think that when we see something happening, the first thing that we should do is acknowledge that I, I apologize that I didn't, I didn't let you know that, oh, I forgot, like me, what I'll do, oh, I forgot to CC you on that because I'm not going to purposely do something uh, to someone when they are new to this thing and trying to find their space and you got two people still doing the same job. 
job. I think sometimes we have to be a little bit careful about how we are handling and start to think about how another person may feel also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of that comes with putting yourself in that other person. In another position. Person what uh, I want, what I want this done to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's uh, to me is looking past the tip of your nose yes. as to how that person and it and to me that's inviting them into the fold and say, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I, I did this and letting them know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I see what you're saying. I get exactly what you're saying. One one thing I have learned from situations like that is I don't know how you guys take it, but there are often times when I find myself into, um, you know, like maybe an agitated thing, I always turn it around and allow God to show me the right way to go about doing it. And then I start teaching people the right way. That's right. I don't, I try not to get offended when I see other people doing things that may cause an offense to me, but I use that as a leverage in my life to say, I would not want to treat someone like that. So I'm not going to throw back things that other people are throwing to me. That's in relationships too. I'm not going to treat people like that in relationships either. I'm right. going to always stop to, to you know, kind of think about, okay, mate, or, or even give people the benefit of the doubt, give them some grace. Maybe they don't know that that's yes. a behavior that they're not supposed to be caring. So it's going to be up to us sometimes to show people the right way to go about doing that's that. That's true. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. yeah. Anybody have any comments or anything out there? Miss Nikki, you are quiet tonight, dear. <laughs> yes, yeah. I got a comment. Yes, ma'am, Miss Tina. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, doing fine. Good. Fine. Um, when you was talking about the word thing with people making you feel a certain type of way. So I was kind of in that position a while, while back. I had uh, we had got a new director who's my boss and she had already knew the other managers and uh, team leaders but I was new up under her so I pretty much knew my job and what I was supposed to do even before she came because it was a director before her but all of a sudden you normally do not email me and so she would send me emails and I would, and I noticed she would send me emails, but she would put my, my manager, my director on the email. She'll CC. She'll ask me to do something, but she would CC my director on the email. I'm like, why is she CC? I didn't think nothing about it. Cause I'm like, so I know she kept emailing me several things, several things. I started feeling some type of, I'm like, why every time she emailed me something, she put my director on me. Well, I had to figure it out. So a lot of things she was asking me to do, it really wasn't my job to do, which is fine. I'm always helping people to do things. But as I found out a little bit more about it, I guess she asked me to do things that she know I'm supposed to be doing for her. She's supposed to do herself or somebody else supposed to be doing it, not me. So when I found out, she was emailing my director, CCing her on my emails, so I won't say no. To do, you know, like I won't turn the, you know, turn the, which turn her down. So once I figured that out, she sent me something to do. No, I'm not gonna be able to do that today. You might have to send this to so and so, so and so. She stopped putting my director on those emails because I kept on saying, why is she put my director don't care nothing about what you asked me to do. And I just felt like she was really bullying me because she did it for a long time. I like she just, she just wanted, she just kept bullying me. So I had to figure out like I, I was just really like frustrated. And I'm like, does she feel like my director? Oh, so she feel like whatever she asked me to do, she gonna put me. My director on it. I have I started replying. No, no, the first time, like, no, I ain't gonna be able to do this. So, 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 my director never did respond. She stopped doing it. So, every time she asked to do something, she won't have a director on her, or she just wouldn't ask me. But I just feel like she kept bullying me, like, I'm gonna tell you to do this and do this and do this and do this. And I don't think you're gonna say no. But you have somebody else who can do it too. Yeah. 
years. Yeah. I, I think it's little things like this that put us in shells to where mm -hmm. we're afraid to speak out about different things that are going on around us. And sometimes, to be honest, um, I almost think that that's what the enemy is trying to do. We're talking mm -hmm. about getting back on track. Right. And sometimes I think there is um, that there is a spirit of fear that tries to come out where, you know, individuals, individuals try to intimidate. And Joe mm -hmm. said it a few minutes ago about how uh, sometimes people try to demote you to promote themselves, which is an area of fear as well. And I mm -hmm. think as we even look at relationships out there, that we have to recognize the enemy uh, that's really... Um, trying to take center stage with that. Is it the enemy of fear? Is it the enemy of sabotage? Um, uh, is it the, you know, um, you know, is it something that's trying to uh, stop you from getting to your destination? And I think if we would stop for a moment and think about maybe what the enemy is after and do the opposite thing, especially mm -hmm. when it comes down to, you know, insecurities that we have, because we're going to face them, they're going to come up in our lives, but I think the key is to make sure to face them properly, you know, to take response. I think that's what Joe was trying to say a few minutes ago. If there's no storm in here, there's no storm out there, you know, right. take care of those things properly. And then that way the enemy does not get a foothold in our lives. Had I bathed on that or had Mr. Welton kept bathing on that and didn't say anything about it, that thing would have festered up into something else in life. And that place of insecurity would have stayed there. Not saying that it's not completely gone, but at least you're addressing that thing right now to where it does not have a stronghold in your life. So that's right. yeah, that's um, right. I think um, just to chime in on that, I think that's exactly what Matthew 18 is saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I was just, um, Holy Spirit said, open up and look at what it says in the message. Mm -hmm. You know, the message Bible, and, mm -hmm. it, and it says here, if a fellow believer hurts you, first mm -hmm. of all, a fellow believer, yeah, so right. dealing with two believers, not one in, one out, but it says, if a fellow believer hurts, hurts you, go and tell him, work it out between the two of you, work yeah. it out, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you said, and and if he listens, you have made a friend. You want, a, you want him over. Made a friend, mm -hmm. right? And if he won't listen, take one or two others along. And we say when, when we have two together, God is in the midst, right? That's right. He's in That's there, right? So that the presence of witnesses will keep things honest and try again. That's if right. he still won't listen, tell the church. If he won't listen to the church, you have to start over from scratch confront him with the need for repentance and offer again God's forgiving love and so that just confirms the word when we have to love or forgive 77 over and over million times, <laughs> right yeah. so you're still trying to make it whole but I think it's good that we recognize um I had a discussion earlier um today when I think when the enemy will use certain people or situations to try to um, continue with this behavior that that's right or push mm -hmm. you in a corner whatever the situation might be but then on the other hand God wants us to pass the test that's mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so with that it's like twofold working you got this frustration over here God wants you to pass the test so the enemy will get off your back once mm -hmm. you learn how to be victorious in that area, then the enemy's going to back off. That's right. they know that he, can't, he can't mess with you anymore. So he's right. going to go mess with something else, right? And leave mm -hmm. you alone, right? So I think it's, a, it's, a, it's also um, you're learning how to recognize or, or how to detect that type of spirit that comes against you and what it is and then how to how to dismantle it that's right you know in a way that that is still in love and you still have you know rectification in that certain area so mm -hmm. i think i think a lot of times the um it starts in the mind too mm -hmm. that's where a lot of it starts at because you know we got memories 
you know, because, you know, if anything, anything familiar bumps up against you, it's not the new thing that has bothered you. It's a memory that bothered you. Mm -hmm. And we're having to go in and confront the memories. That's why it's always best to heal, you know, um, as much as you can before moving forward or get complete healing, you know, in your life by, um, you know, because sometimes, you know, we will go so far with our healing process, mm -hmm. but we won't go and ask God for a total healing in our life because it's a lack of total healing that could stop you from actually going into a beautiful relationship or anything else because there's still a memory of something that's kind of hanging around. So yeah. the residue mm -hmm. about insecurity. <laughs> the yeah. residue will get you. The residue. Mm -hmm. The residue. That's exactly right. That's right. Anybody else want to share anything tonight? We're talking about insecurity, acknowledging your insecurities in relationships. Anybody? I was going to say, too, just to do a little bit more on that. You know, in this season, you should ask God to put a real God to the past season. Ooh, come on. Say that again, Joe. You God. should ask God to help you to form a real God against the, the last season. Mm -hmm. that's, that's asking God to help you heal from that. Uh, because newness, you know, we always say new levels bring new devils. And, and devil ain't, is always not sleeping now. The devil do what the devil do. But in this room and in the rooms where we come together, it's all a matter of, we don't have all the answers, but we know a God that have all the answers. And we put a few out here on the table and, and strengthen each other in those areas. Um, and that's, that's just important. It really is. And nothing else more important, especially a new season and that's newness right. yeah I mean, yeah so that's good I, I never thought about that put a rear guard from your past season yes yeah and that's key. that is that's yeah. good anybody it's, have any comments on that go ahead joe no I, I was gonna say and, and if i may just for a moment is we're talking about I wanted to just expound on a couple of things that may help us in getting our life back on track is this is the um, month in the Jewish calendar is the month of Tevet. And I just wanted to say a couple of things about that. It's the, tri it's the month of Tevet and the tribe of Dan in the 12 tribe. It's to judge, to grow you up and mature you. But one thing that I like in this Step on the serpent's head this month. Because mm. when you step on the head, the other part will die. Come on. Be willing to walk when God calls you. Mm. Stand for your inheritance and don't back down. That's good. That is good. Show Pay attention. There's two more things that I wanted to bring out that I think it definitely, it definitely helped me, uh, helping me, let me say that. Pay attention to the prophetic words over your lives so you do not miss your destiny. Mm, that is good. And the, and the other was, I said part of it a moment ago, pray for new artistic creative expressions in worship this month and mm -hmm. ask God how to form a real God over your past season. Can, can you it. type that? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was me. That was mm, mm, good. Like him. <laughs> can you say that again, Joe? Can you say uh -huh. it again? Can you repeat it? Okay. The, the all of it or what which part? Everything. Just go start. Okay. Yeah. Start yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, it's the tribe of Dan, the month of Tibet. To judge, grow, grow up, and mature. Uh, the month, well, no, I didn't do that one. Uh, pray for the new artistic and creative expressions in worship this month. 
Ask God how to form a real God over the past season. Mm. Pay attention to the prophetic words over your life so you do not miss your destiny. Be willing to walk when God calls you. Stand for your inheritance and don't back down. Step on the serpent's head this month. And this, this month is a time for new life to flow. Oh, Lord. Good, Joe. You need to take a screenshot of that and send that to yes, us. Absolutely. <laughs> Please do. Is, isn't good. that something that 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 word comes out in January, the first mm -hmm. month of the year? Yes. For and us to be in a position to mm -hmm. be able to be fruitful the other sure. months of the year. Because if we don't get this right now, right. then other things that are not in the rear guard can overtake us. Yes. And, and we won't get the fullness. No, that you want us to have for the whole year. If yep. we have to do it mid yeah. and find out what you just said in July. Mm -hmm. That's half the year already gone. Yes. Now, you know, that's, all the time. Yeah. So that's really and this is and some of the things you already have been doing, Marilyn, is this morning is a good time to fast to purify the blood so your brain and heart function properly. So y'all been doing the cleansing and you know all of that. And it's important because again, and I don't want to sound repetitious, in this season of newness, Satan elevates of destroying that. So what am I saying? We have to pray for leaders, spiritual leaders, all of us. We all are really, if we talk about God, we all ministers. We don't have to have the office, but Satan not pleased with that. So we have to pray for each other and pray for strength. But at the same time, be aware of this, of the, of the things of the evil one, you know. But I'll, 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 I'll send that out. Thanks, I just, I, and I, I think that as we are um, entering into, um, you know, even this new year, you know, one of the things that I said the other day was that um, there was some things that tried to follow us, tried to come into the new year with us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and insecurity may have been one of them. Debt could have been another thing. Anger could have been another thing. Um, you know, the thing is for us to recognize uh, what we brought in because we are the one that carry the stuff in. You That's know? right. And if we're going to get back on track with things, you know, you have to start thinking, well, why is this thing still on my back? You have to ask yourself, did you bring it in? That's right. Did you, like Joe said, did you, you do, you go through a season of judgment? Did you go through a place where you were growing up and you were maturing to the things that you recognize or, you know, take an audit of things in your own life? And I think that uh, every year at the beginning of the year, there needs to be some times of auditing you know, audit, auditing your friendships, auditing your behavior, auditing, you know, your past experience. Did you, did you, um, uh, did you um, deal with things properly? Because y'all, one thing that um, God is, is sharing with me, he, he's doing um, some, he's, he's doing some, um, he's doing some, some new things with some old experiences. It's kind of like the seasons of life, you know, when you, you know, go through what, winter, summer, spring, and fall, you know, we have, whenever one season goes out, it's time for another season to come in and whatever that previous season didn't get done, it's gonna have to wait till the next time when it has permission to come in. Right now, I think that what's happening with a lot of our lives, there were some things that we closed out of season two, but we didn't close the doors properly. Yeah. We just walked out of the season. I'm done with that or whatever. And we walked into a new season, not knowing you can feel that you got baggage on you, but you just don't know exactly what baggage is there. And then you get to the end of the year, you know, you made it to the finish line, but you don't have no strength to cross over. That's because right. you carried from every season things that should have been handled in that particular season. 
and -hmm. should have been left behind there. So if we're feeling like there's some dragging, at least this is what I did. I went back to say, okay, God, did we close out the year properly? And if we didn't, what's happening is, Lord, I thank you for these chances. I think, Joe, you said the magic word. You said a rear guard from the past seasons, right. you know, and when I think about that, it's like, you know, Lord, thank you for your protection. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your covering, because I mm-hmm. know that you're going to bring it back around again. And I want to, I want to be ready when this thing comes back up, because I don't want to continue to keep seeing the same enemy over and over again. But I think there has to be an an auditing that takes place with us that says, I have been here before. I have seen this before. And the key is to handle things differently than what you did in a past season. That's what lets you know that you have actually grown from that. That's right. That's right. And that's, you know, and then one of the things we were, I was in, a, in on a coaching class. And that's why y'all see that background behind me. I was on a coaching class. And one of the, one of the things that he talked about was solve bigger problems this year. So you know, solve bigger problems this year. Yes. yes. That's a sign that you're growing. Even, you know, you keep, you know how it is. You get some type of um, um, opposition that comes up against you. That's a big problem to you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. A bigger problem comes in to say that it's not a problem. Right. It's an opportunity. Yes, that's right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to solve a bigger, bigger problem, which really is my opportunity to cross over. Mm-hmm. So if I were really look at that thing properly, what the Lord is really saying is that your season is coming back around. I'm getting ready to do a new thing from something old that you were going through. And I just want to know if you're ready for it or not. Mm-hmm. And that's what I look at that rear guard from past season, you know, some kind of way God comes in and shows you that, all right, we're coming back again up on that. You know, are you ready? You know, whether mm-hmm. it be relationship jobs or whatever the case may be, because the Bible said, as long as seed time and harvest remains, the earth is going to yield her increase. That's right. And she's going to give you an opportunity to do things all over again. And I think within that, uh, we have to start thinking, okay, it's on me now. It ain't mm-hmm. on nobody else. I can't blame nobody else for anything that's going on in my life. It's going to be on me. And then I have to stop the blame game. That's the only yeah. way we're going to let go of, you know, weights that have been on us or whatever. We have to stop the blame game and realize it really was a bigger problem coming in called opportunity. And when I look at it as an opportunity, that thing will no longer be challenging me anymore. You know, and that's area. right. Amen. That that's that makes so so much sense. <laughs> now, we're growing, y'all. We've been in this. <laughs> listen, we've been in this relational room. How long? A long time. <laughs> yes, yes. And 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 like you said, Marilyn, that's the test. It's coming back around. It's coming back around. Mm-hmm. But the key is, what are you going to do when it hits you, mm-hmm. or when it comes up? Are you going to be the same person six or months ago or there's a new you that says, look, you took my keys, but I'm going back and take them out of your pocket and put them back in my pocket. They belong over here. And that's the, that's that testing Amen. to see. I'm going to go back and get my keys. They don't belong to you. Go get your love back. Go, what, yes. Yeah, go get yes. your love back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever, whatever those keys mean to you. Yeah. You know when you retrieved it. That's right. If that you, you can know. open the door with those keys. Yes. Everybody right. can't open your door. Every key can't open your door. <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah. You have to get the right key. Yeah. But the right yeah. keys will. Right. Right. Key. right. That's when we've learned the lessons of life. Yes. Yeah. And, and and once we learn the lesson, it won't appear no more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The lesson has been learned. Yeah, go ahead. Miss Tamara, um, she, she dropped a lot in the box. She said this transparency is growth. The transparency is growth and strengthening. Uh, everything shared is enlightening and self-reflecting. Revelation 12 and 11 is written. They conquered him completely through the blood of the lamb and the power of a powerful word of his testimony. 
They triumphed because he did not love and cling to their own flesh, even when faced with death, death of insecurity. Our inner spirits and mind are building up so we can overcome the old hidden triggers through the, oh, that's good, through the yes, of the Holy is. Spirit and godly counsel and witnessing such, uh, such was what is being shared. Thank you, Lord, for my rear guard and my front bumpers to bounce off that offense or situation that tries to impact us. That's good. Awesome. Yes, awesome. It is. Awesome. That is really, really good. Yes. Yeah. Does anybody great. else have anything that they'd like to share? We'd love for y'all to open up your mics and, you know, get in on the conversation. And, you know, if y'all dealt with any insecurities and, you know, or is there anything that came into the new year with you that you need to let go of even tonight in this room? You recognize you know, that I was holding on to something and I don't want to keep carrying that because I've experienced that before. And I realized that there is nothing good that comes out of that except for another season of having to go back around it again. So anybody? Well, Mel, I, was, I was just going to add that um, with, you know, insecurities, it, it has a lot to do because sometimes when insecurities come in, um, whether it's with a relationship or a situation or friendship or whatever, you know, it does not always come in like upfront, you know, sometimes like situations take place and then, you know, your emotions are all over the place. And then you realize that there are some insecurities there by a situation. And, uh, you know, that's just, a, that's just where that accountability also comes in it. And, you know, just stepping back, looking at it like, well, this really might not be this. It may be, you know, I need to check my own emotions, mm -hmm. you know, like, cause sometimes it's, when you said like, just then, you know, you have to do an audit, you know, like on self, like check yourself, you know, were you in that or were your emotions in that? Cause sometimes, you know, what that is, is not that. And it's so funny because when we were doing um, Naomi's Love this week and you had told, you had, you know, mentioned to us about the accountability team. I had actually, uh, the, with that exercise, I had put myself on there a couple of times because it was a couple of things that I had to go back and hold myself accountable for, like for certain things. And, you know, I was journaling and it was just like, um, I had written down, you know, about being intentional about the things that I let into my own spirit you know, don't, don't let what should have just been like a feeling or like that, a certain emotion, you know, come in and rob you and become a spirit. You know, sometimes we hold on tight to if it's an insecurity or a certain emotion and we turn it into a spirit. And, you know, sometimes that feeling can cause you, like it can cause us to be our own stumbling block, you know? So I wrote down, I told myself, you know, you're going to just have to break covenant with some old things, you know, so God can introduce you to some new things. That's right. And so that's just what I'm daily learning too. like accepting accountability on certain things, putting my emotions into place, get my heart posture where it needs to be. God align me with this situation so I won't take it like this. So it won't that's turn right. into this certain kind of insecurity or that's so it right. won't become a spirit, you know, just breaking covenant with what's old and, and, and being in position for what's new. Yeah. That's that was, right. Yeah. That's, that's good, Nikki. Yes, um, it is. That, that goes to show that whatever the thing is, didn't have you, you know? Right. And, um, and to be honest, um, some of the places that God is trying to take us, we don't have room for those. Those things don't have room there. Right. You know, like if you are going into, you know, um, supervisory, going into management or whatever, um, you can't walk around with all those insecurities on you or, uh, you have the blame game or different things like that. So we do have to take accountability because we're the ones that asking God for promotions in our lives. We're the, at, we're the one asking God to uh, bring a higher dimension of something into our lives. But the Bible tells us to whom much is given, much is going to be required. That's right. required of you so and I think that's where we all have to take a look at our lives to ask the question are you really ready for what it is that you're asking for that's right you know, yeah. because there may be offenses mm -hmm. you know there may be places where you know maybe you look at something one way and you know God is saying that I need you to be a leader in that I need mm -hmm. you to lead by example but if you're you know still um um having fellowship 
with whatever that thing is, it 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 causes you to be um, withdrawn from the um, um, the selection process, mm -hmm. and and you may have to go back around another season. It's not that God's not willing to give it to you. Sometimes He's just saying not right now. And unfortunately, sometimes in relationships, and I want us to really think about this. There are some relationships that you guys have tried to enter into that you wanted it to be more than what it was. But if that person had not uh, gotten a um, gotten a okay from God, or the Lord, uh, you know, um, you know, shared that um, that uh, that that the person was not ready to move forward in that for whatever the reason may be, and you're trying to make them move forward, you're going to be pulled back just as much as they will. That's you know, right. and so sometimes we have to cut our losses with things because people make choices that they are not ready to go to higher ground. That's just like, you know, when you move into position, you know, you may have been a, you know, just a common worker or whatever, but then you got promoted to a supervisory. You can't keep acting like you did on one level in the area supervisor because it's going to cause some problem. You're going to be that weak link in the bunch to where, we can't count on you because you always bring problems. You never solve problems. You're bringing problems. And what's going to happen eventually, there's going to be a demotion that takes place and it doesn't feel good when we've been demoted or when something seems to be held back from us. Now. That's right. So, any other comments from anybody tonight? Good one, Nikki. Good one. Yes. He said, was the word bullying used intentionally? Uh, tell us what you mean by that, Wellner. Well, what I was thinking is that in many times, you know, you have adders and subtractors in your life. And a lot of times the subtractors have bullying, uh, bullying tendencies because uh, they try to get you to do things that may be against your will. Mm -hmm. And so, so I, I, I just thought it was, I never you heard, I never uh, heard that the bullying used in the situation that we were with the relationships between two people, but yeah, yeah but in, uh, in relationships that are not, uh, are, that are toxic or, or not healthy, uh, nine times out of 10, one of those, one of those people are a bully. Yeah. You don't call it that. That's you know exactly what I mean? Right. That's, that's a that's a word that I think that everybody understands. I know mm -hmm. I understand it. I was bullied when I you know I grew up in L.A. I and uh, you know and I didn't fit in that environment. But you know so so there was some bullying going on that I received. And so yes, when those things um, those things pop up like that, and uh, it, it it can even take you back to your childhood. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, you know the, the genesis of of those of those feelings and uh, so I just thought it was True. real appropriate you know using the word bullying in those situations as well yeah I think that was a new word that God gave to me I had never looked at things like that but there was there are some things that that take place in workplaces that is just downright bullying yes yep. it is oh, yeah. mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. downright bullying because when a person does not do something the way that you want them to, uh, sometimes people start throwing temper tantrums or threats mm -hmm. that, you know, you're going to get fired or whatever. That's bullying to me. Yes, it is. That's right. You know, yeah. and I think the very moment that we recognize what it is and you ask God how to counteract that, you know, because a lot of times what we'll do is you know, when we're, when we're not in our set place with God, we start fighting back with natural weapons. Oh, that's you right. gonna bully me, I'm going to bully you. <laughs> bully you back, you know? yeah. I'm going to bully right. you back. But in essence, the Lord said, I'm just revealing to you that this is what this is called, just in case you see that again. But that's I right. need you to handle things a little bit different. And then, believe it or not, um, if you don't deal with the root of a thing, bullying will be back. Oh, yeah. That's right. It may not come back in the same setting that it's in, and it may come back. Sometimes it comes back subtle, you know, but if you don't deal with it, it will come back again. Yes, sir. Yeah. In your relationships, if you don't deal with something that bothers you, it will be back again. 
I want to continue with the story that we were reading a little bit earlier about Josh. Um, and she went on to say, when Josh noticed some of my awkward behavior, he would ask me about it. And I wasn't fully aware of the reason why I was acting that way at the time. And his questions made me start to think about it. We talked about it and Josh listened. And eventually after enough talking about it and after understanding how, how accepted I was by Josh and by my savior, I began to grow and piece by piece leave some of my insecurities behind. A similar transformation happened with Josh. I asked him why he seemed, seemed to get, get frustrated and embarrassed when I asked him about his, his career goals. Eventually he was able to reply that not being a, as career driven as many, other, uh, many others, he knew was a big insecurity for him. So for each of us, it wasn't enough to simply know that our significant others accepted us. Um, our insecurities went deeper than just our relationship with each other. They also had to do with our relationship with Christ and how secure we felt with him. Yes. If I had been strongly convicted, convinced from the start that I think somebody's mic is open, strongly convinced from the start that all that matters was, was that Jesus had forgiven me and accepted me, then I would never have spent so much time worrying about what others thought about me. Mm -hmm. Same goes for Josh. If his, if his securities had come from the fact that he is a co-heir with Christ, the fact that he is not as career minded as some people, some of his peers would not have made him feel like less than a man. I That's think the true. bottom line is that um, even I think life is full of lessons. Yes, that's right. You know, even when they, we go through ups and downs with things. And at the end of the day, what I'm hearing in this story is that they had count of accountability with one another. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes when you're out in the world system, world system deals with things one way. But when we come into a family of believers, we come in to reason with one another. And that's what we're doing in this room tonight. We right. come to reason with one another. And we always put Christ back at back on the throne because it's obvious that what the enemy was trying to do was try to move God out of his set place and yes. put themselves in God's place. And that's, that's right. when you start realizing what type of enemy that you were dealing with. Bullying, that is something that wants to take God's place. Insecurities, that's something that wants to take God's place. Anger and fear, that's something that wants to take God's place. But if we put him back on the throne. That's right. And we declare that my God shall supply all of my needs. Is that my God knows the way that I take that I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. We put him back in position and then little by little, all the insecurities begin to start moving away. Yeah, what am I saying with that? Yeah. Back to what, what Nikki said, that accountability part. This season that we're in, we're getting back on track mm -hmm. and we're going to bring some account accountability into our lives so that when life tries to throw us a curve ball, that we have some people that we can go to to help us to get things back on track. Now, what was that all about? You know, what was that, that what, what was that noise all about? What was that thing that I was doing that was so out of order? It's because we're not putting God in place where he needs to be. That's right. Anywhere that we try to protect our hearts and protect ourselves and not walk in complete love, it's a place to where you have not put God back where he belongs. So if you're dealing with an issue, whether it be relationships, whether it be on the job, if we would just simply put God back where he belongs, God is not the author of confusion. You know, uh, he, he said he's the finisher. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, the Lord said that one, you know, uh, he's not, he's not one that comes in to bring all kind of doubt. He didn't give you a spirit of fear, but love, power, a sound mind. What he's trying to do is lead us back to the word of God. That's the only way you're going to put God back on the throne. That's right. It's That's to get right. to the word of God. And the Lord said, anywhere you're dealing with insecurities or fears, you're lacking me in that place. That's mm -hmm. right. 
So what I need you to do is I need you to find the word that correlates with whatever it is that you're dealing with and put me back in it. If you got to keep repeating it over and over again until you believe it yourself, That's little right. by little, what's going to happen, that total healing is going to take place because anywhere that I put God back in this spot, the enemy can't do me no harm. The Bible says mm -hmm. that when the enemy, when the enemy comes against you, he says, the Lord will lift up a standard, which is the word of God. And the word of God is what brings that healing into our lives. Amen. Oh, by far. Yeah. Oh, that's that's real. Good. <laughs> you go back because, because the enemy, he he doesn't know any new tricks. So no. the word of God is going to be the word of God. Like that is there to stay. So you have, if you have to go back, go back because with, I mean, disappointment and all that, like it, it, it will distract you from yeah. your purpose, you know, yeah. so you have to stand on the word of God. You have to have an anchor because the enemy and your feelings, if you're going off your feelings, boy, your heart will have you confused sometimes, you know, so, yeah. but the word of God is going to stand, <laughs> you know, so that's why I said like the energy, you know, for this year, you know, is, is giving high priority to healing and, and your emotional uh, history, you know, just managing your reactions, how you react to things, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes sit in the moment, pray about it and not, you know, more self-awareness because the inner work is what makes life and love better. That's, That's with right. your life, relationships, whatever, your relationship with God, you know, it's all within and it's right there in the world. You get lost, you know, it ain't, you know, the GPS, they, they tell you, they tell you where you're going, but you can still get lost using the GPS. But, you know, I have found that when I get lost, but God's GPS, I go to my Bible and it's just mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm right where I need to be. Sometimes I just open it up, you know, in a page, I'm just right where I need to be. Just like, That's you right. know, you in a situation, you know, you can't control that situation. But if you stand still and just stand on the word of God, he's going to put you right where you need mm -hmm. to be. So, I love it. I love yeah. It. Y'all, I want to I want to uh, close on this. Um, more and more, we keep coming to these rooms. Uh, we're going to understand why God's word is always the thing that's supposed to lead us. When it comes down to relationships, the Bible said, "Don't be unequally yoked up." That's right. That's right. You need to have somebody that's an an accountability partner with you. To where when one is weak, the other one is strong. Mm -hmm. You're having a bad day, the other one ought to be able to pick you up. Mm -hmm. but both of you shouldn't be having the same bad day. That just kind of goes against the word if, if y'all are there as a support to one another. you know. So you want to make sure not to be unequally yoked, even in your beliefs, you know, in your faith. Um you know, um, I heard Faith talk about, you know, they have things in common with each, find some commonality. For those of you that are wondering, you know, I know when people get real quiet, they dealing with some stuff. You, when y'all come in the room and y'all ain't saying so, that's called y'all dealing with some stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready to talk about it just yet because you're in the middle of a situation shit. We just came out of that in December. You're in the middle of a situation shit but loneliness got you there mm -hmm. and you don't want to talk about it because you're not really ready to face whatever that thing is. And sometimes the bottom line is you're messing yeah. around with something that's completely unequally yoked up with you and God. And it's one of those things the Lord said, you got to choose this day who you're going to serve. Mm -hmm. You can't serve God and mammon at the same time. And the very moment that you let that weight up off of you, the more you're going to start hearing your own voice again. Because right now, condemnation got your voice. That's right. Guilt got your voice. It won't let you say nothing. And sometimes we hope and pray when we come in this room that I just want to sit in here and not say anything, but we in some stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's why we have to bring accountability to the table to open up and talk about things. This is a safe place to come and talk. OK, what if such and such says this to me? You know, should I be accepting that? And listen, if you're in young stages of your walk with God, there's nothing wrong with that. That's right. It's, it's better to just open up and hear some wisdom instead of continue, instead of coming in and not saying anything about it, then get right off this phone and call up that same un, un, unequally yoked up somebody and they choke you back up again tonight. That's right. Oh, well, Miss Marilyn, may I, yes, may I something? I don't know if this will help somebody or not. Okay, so 
and I hope I get it out right. But, you know, um, sometimes we look at what equally yoked is, is what we want. What we want. What we want <laughs> yoked to look mm-hmm. like and, and to be. And I can say that, <clears throat> you know, if it's a flesh thing, if you're equally lo- yoked, is a how a person looks and it don't line up with what's inside, that's unequally yoked. Because mm-hmm. that person might look real good on the out shell. But when you start learning that other person and it don't line up with the inside, then you got an issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got a big issue because now y'all, your your senses have been stimulated by the outward. That's right. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, even through with, with Welton, it's like I had to, I had to kind of wake up in my own self because he's different. He's different than any man I've ever dealt with because he goes from the inside like he knows how or he or God has showed him how I haven't been treated <clears throat> and he compliments that with what how I should be treated mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying as far mm-hmm. as things unexpected ding dong Amazon's at your door I'm like, Welton, what did you send me? You know, <laughs> things that you are not expecting to get, mm-hmm. but they're, you know, they're big things, little things, but you'll know what that looks like. Now, would, would it be like, he's not Idris Elby. You know, you know how Idris is, everybody's Idris. Oh, you know, he's so fine. He looks like, that's not Welton. But he's Idris to me inside. You know what I'm saying? So we got to stop looking at the outward shell and look at the inward. And when that man or that woman treats you in a way that you've never been treated before, that but you long for, then you know that that's a yoke. Not an unequally yoke. It's a yoke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of, I think one of the ways that you recognize uh, something that's yoking up with God, it speaks to your spirit. That's, that's true. right. Yes, that's yeah. right. Then the spirit it, it, it speaks to your spirit first. It ain't going to say mm-hmm. that. Yeah. It ain't going it, it to eventually try to speak to your flesh, but it ain't going to start mm-hmm. off speaking mm-hmm. to your flesh. Right. It's going to speak to your spirit. It's going to want to know how you're doing. That's right. right. It's going to want to know about your well-being. Right. Yes. It's going to yeah. want to know about, you know, your spiritual life. It's going to talk about God at some point. Mm-hmm. If you're right. dealing with people that don't never talk about God. Mm-hmm. Never. Run. Don't you talk about, don't you talk about what you love? Absolutely. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he just ain't got nothing on him. <laughs> yeah. 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 We ought to, I, and, I, and I think we just have to be open. Y'all, this is not the season to continue to keep doing what you were doing last year. That's why you got that. That's why you got that ball and chain came, coming into the new year. Cause you came in doing the same time thing because it looked like to me, it felt like to me, but if you're not strengthening your relationship with God it's going to keep looking like that to you. That's right. Y'all, we owe it to ourselves to ask God to send people into our lives that would help to strengthen our walk. That's right. That we both come in to help strengthen each other's walk. You know, not just me being a taker. I want to be a giver too. I don't want to do anything that's going to hinder their walk with God. I don't want to do anything that's going to, you know, cause them to stumble and fall or anything. I want to be a help to them. And you got to start that early, guys. We're only five days into the new year. And if you already recognize that it's some heavy stuff on you, you got to change your language to God. Change Mm -hmm. your appetite for what it is. Sometimes your appetite wants just what you want. That's just that spoiled child that's still in us. But the Bible explicitly says that when I was a child, I thought like a child. I behaved like a child. I acted like a child, but when I became an adult or mature, I put away those childish things. It's not about me. 
It's not That's right. me. So I hope this has helped you guys tonight or help. I know it helped me. Oh yeah. Being able yeah. to come into the room and and even being accountable. I think sometimes sometimes just showing up is just accountability. You know that just in case something outside these rooms are trying to trap me up. You know. I've already come in and I've already heard something and now I'm responsible for what I've heard. Mm -hmm. And the more that I put my level of responsibility on that, if I make one step, God will make a couple of steps with me as well. And we mm -hmm. started off this, this year uh, with just repentance, repentance right. in my heart. You know, and just asking God to forgive us for right. you know, not always following his way, mm -hmm. you know, um, we, we were so caught up sometimes in our emotions and our feelings, what it looked like to me, but, you know, we ask God to forgive us for being so touchy all the time. That's right. You know, yes. um, being so, uh, childlike all the time, you know, and Lord help us to grow up in these areas to let my heart, uh, resemble your heart, you That's know, right. my thoughts and my words resemble your thoughts and your words. If you'll ask him, he'll do it for you. That's right. I guarantee you he'll do it for you. But you have to ask for what it is that you need. And just know that God said he's faithful and he's just. He'll supply everything that you need in your life if you'll just ask him for it. Amen. That's right. Amen. I was, and I was going to add to Miss Marilyn, just add like a humbling spirit too. Yes. Oh, by far. Yeah. It's okay to be humble, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and be and, soft. And show vulnerability sometimes. I mean, you don't have to do that all the time, but you don't have to always be so masculine. I think sometimes that just, it, it hardens you and then it hardens the person. You never know who's trying to get in and then who, and, and where you need to get in, you know? So sometimes when we're just too masculine about things, you know, it just makes it hard to love and hard to be loved. So, you know, just, you know, that's my thing, being soft. You just oh. got to be soft. In her soft season, right? Yes, <laughs> baby, my soft season. I'm telling you, I'm going to take that somewhere. You better go. go yeah. You sure yeah. better do that. Yeah. Know. You know, I, I think, too, one of the deepest principles in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Uh, appreciate oh, thyself. Go. Appreciate Jesus. thyself. And no, don't believe. No, I'm worthy. Uh -huh. I am the king's child. Achievement is the natural order of things. And that is truly our birthright. Don't give up your birthright to nobody, to nobody. And the doors of wisdom are never shut, Amen. never. Knowing your, thyself is the highest of wisdom. And all we get, get some wisdom for 2023 and let's fly like we never flown before. Amen. Amen. I love it. Wow. Right. You better say that, Mr. Jones. <laughs> I know. He right? had to say wow. He knew that was smooth. He had to say wow. He felt that himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Marilyn <laughs> said, you better get careful what you ask for. So. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I pray God's blessings over y'all. Y'all, I'm going to be in the room once a month now. I'm trying to cut back on a lot of stuff. I got a lot, a lot, a lot of things on my plate. Uh, we're actually having our uh, leadership meeting this Sunday, and I got a lot. When I say a lot on my plate, and I'm trying to distribute things to where I don't have to be everywhere at all time. But y'all gonna have some capable hands in this room, Mr. Joe, Ms. Faith, Ms. Nikki, Ms. Cheryl. And I want y'all to rock this room out. Y'all hear me? Bring about accountability in every place that you can. Cause I'm telling you, God got some stuff laid out for you that if you would just be willing and you would be yeah. obedient. Let me tell you, you're going to eat the good of the land. And when the Lord starts blessing one, he starts blessing us all. So we all got to be good examples toward one another. You know, so the other ones, when they come in, I think Faith and Weldon, they started it out well. They came in with accountability for one another. Mm -hmm. We come in to check to see, make sure, you know, we don't have to hide our relationship. 
You know, we got a lot, you know, that's, that's right. Well, they got, a, they, they, they feel good about what they're doing. So they're not hiding anything, you know? Right. So, um, I just pray that God will continue to bless and, and not only, you know, those two, but there'll be some other one popping up in the room and, you know, and then everybody brings accountability before, before we know it, you know, we start having exactly what God said we're going to have. We're going to have a marriage room in a minute. Yeah, we <laughs> Come on, Mr. Joe. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. It's a connection. Now, it's it's a connection. Get connected Amen. with somebody. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And uh, we'll close out for the night. And y'all, I'll see y'all in February. And I look forward to coming in here and what y'all doing in these rooms. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Miss Faith. Oh, I didn't even hear it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we just thank you. We appreciate you, Father. We love you. We honor you. We we glorify you tonight, Father. We thank you, God, that you brought us and you crossed us over into 2023. God, we just want to do what you have called us to do. But first, we want to be, you know, we want to be right internally, God. We want to be the best that we can be for ourselves and for you, Father. So we thank you for this room. We thank you for all that are in the room and those who will listen to the replay. We thank you, God, that during this week and over the weekend, God, that you would deal with us and examine. We'll do a self-assessment, Father, of where we are and where we need to be. So when we go into February, we'll have a clear understanding of where we are, what temperature and how we interact with one another and how we deal with our situation. So we thank you and we praise you. Keep us safe and keep us healthy until we meet again next Thursday. We give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Congratulations, babe. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>